Well, that was fun. Had my nephew here helping me do some binding, teaching the next generation how to work. Man, that's great. I have been thinking, and since I'm not 100% sure on the performance of the new to me 3070, I think since I'm almost done clearing this out of paper, I'm just gonna take this paper away and maybe just temporarily install the 3070 here to run it to make sure it's gonna do what I need to do before I permanently install it. Uh, that'll just be a little bit easier uh, for me, even though it'll be a little more inconvenient, it's gonna be tight. Oh, and we got one of those holidays on Thursday this week, so like right in the, almost in the middle of the week. So I'll mess up, mess up my, my workflow, but I mean, don't get me wrong, I love turkey day, I love to eat, but man, right in the middle of the week. Okay, we got some book covers. To, oh yeah, we got some guts to print here too. I think we're gonna be running all three of them this morning. Uh, and later today I have a technician coming to take a look at this. We have a lack of magenta going down through the center here. Okay, got my one job done here. Starting covers here and then I'm gonna print guts there. This proof looked good. However, right between the two O's there, you see a little bit of shading. And that'll happen if you have dirt on the laser sometimes. So I'm just gonna clean this out. Just wipe it out and then maybe blow it off a little bit, put it back together and see what she looks like. So I had several people asking me for more detailed explanations as far as crop marks and how we hit them on the cutter um, and layout as we're imposing things. So I didn't impose this, it came to me as is, but there is a one inch gutter here. Uh, and there's no bleed, theoretically these two could be right up against each other so I'd only have one cut to eliminate one cut. But I typically stay away from that at all costs. It doesn't matter if there's no bleed, I still like to cut out a gutter. Uh, I just feel like my cuts are a little more accurate. Now, my cutter here has a light that shines down between the blade and the clamp. And that shows you exactly where the cut is gonna be made. So, we just move this back to where the crop mark is and, uh, and then cut it. I typically cut the one side off of each. I can stack them on top of each other since they're identical sizes. Turn it around. And then since I cut the last one off, I know that it's at 10 inches, so I don't need that last crop mark. That's one thing you need to keep in mind when you're cutting something that has crop marks. You need to go around uh, in a, either a clockwise or counterclockwise because if you cut off one side and then this side, you're not going to have any crop marks for the top and bottom. Okay, let's see how this made out. Oh yeah, that's all gone, that's all cleaned up. So I'm not exactly sure why that happens, what I think happens, and this is just my opinion, and logically thinking about it, is the toner or paper dust potentially sits on the lasers that shine to the drum, and the laser then gets diffused as it goes through that dirt and spreads out, and then will charge the area around, and then that's where the toner will stick. Don't hold me to it, but I think that's what's happening. Okay, those are good. I just realized two things. I have a bunch of labels I need to do on here. 
and I have a newsletter coming for the 1070 later this afternoon. So, just goes to show that I make plans kind of for the day, but then uh, I gotta be a little flexible. And that is also a good reason to have backup machine so that when you're running jobs and something else comes in you can get that one done on another machine my goodness and it's it's 8 15 and I didn't I didn't have coffee yet I gotta I gotta take care of that There's a lot of space here when you move the paper out of the way. Probably gonna move that in here as these are getting punched. Okay, I decided the last minute to just pull the IQ out since the previous customer was not running that. Just want to run it without that. Uh, and then we'll troubleshoot that later. But I just want to get this thing set up, find it on the network, and maybe start running some jobs. Uh, maybe replace the drums if it needs a drum or wire. I've got work for it, so I thought we might as well put it in. It is tight quarters here. It is by no means where it's going to end up, but it'll work here just for a little bit till I see what uh, what this thing runs like. It is so handy. So I just inserted the paper catalog for my existing 3070 in here and loaded up some 1218 into here. I have connected to the machine as well. And... Now we just need to print something. So I wanted to start out by calibrating this and I can definitely see that the, something's going wrong here with the black. I'm kind of assuming a drum issue. I forget what I found when I looked in there earlier, but everything else looks good. Uh, so I want to check the density of that and uh, maybe replace a wire or a drum. And then this thing should be good to go, which is good because I have, I've got work I could run on here. So the wires are overdue and the drums are way overdue. So I'm going to open her up and uh, probably do all the wires and just the black drum. I don't know that I actually have to go any further. Look at all that dirt on the grid. I think I might just need to replace the wires. I might as well look at the drums though. Just so I can see what they're like. I, um, I'm gonna let all those. There's a good bit of dirt in here. Maybe I'll quick vacuum it out a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty sure just changing those wires will be all I need. Okay, I decided I don't need the high cap feeder. Got rid of that. Let's reset these counters. Uh, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Clear. And then let's also... Oops.
Do density revert. I'd be willing to bet what the customer did with this is it went off contract and then they ran a ton of just black and it wore out that that Corona. Um, so all new wires, I'd be willing to bet it's gonna be fine now. Okay, we're done with the density revert and do auto gamma. And then we're all done. Let's calibrate it. That is a beautiful thing. Not a single thing wrong on there. This is what I just printed on the 1070. And this is what I've just printed on the new to me 37, 3070. And it looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna run these. Okay, so if it couldn't get crazy enough, I mean, that machine was cheap and the parts that I needed to fix it came with the machine. That thing's gonna be great. I am having second thoughts though about moving it in here. And I, I just don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but they're both running great. So I just divided the newsletter that I'm currently printing between both presses. Uh, so I get done a little bit sooner and can stitch them and hopefully, hopefully get all that done today. Uh, then I'll be ahead of the game. I think I decided, I think I'm gonna run this a little while, set up here. Um, if it does really good, that'll influence my decision making as far as where I'm gonna put it. Uh, but it looks great so far. I've had I had about three jobs that I wanted to run on this 3070, um, but I think I'm gonna try it over here on the new to me 3070 to see how it runs. So I'm gonna put it through its paces and hopefully think about it and then have a better uh, understanding of what its capabilities are. Well, thanks for watching. That's about all I have time for today. Happy Thanksgiving. Catch you on the next one.